Hey, everybody, Kath Long Gamer. Welcome back to FM 23 Newton Heath. This is episode 57. We are in the January transfer window, and that will be the primary focus of today's episode. And of course, at the beginning of the season, signings were somewhat difficult for us because there were plenty of players available at a similar level to what we had, but with not a huge step between League 2 and League 1, and not a huge step between our reputation, where it was, and where it had improved to we had found it rather difficult so a couple loanies filled some gaps for us and we had a couple new players but it really w was not a uh, transformative squad for us in any way shape or form so we're really hoping that this january we can amass some better players that's that's got to be the objective because we are almost mid-table but we're also not that far away from relegation zone we seem to be comfortable enough and we're going to be able to focus just on the league for the remainder of the season as we're now out of the other cup competitions but finding new players is important and we have found one so far uh, amari hutchinson has signed with us here on the 9th of january and this well uh, the face cam covers his career stats but let me recap it for you because it won't take long arsenal 2020 to 2022 as a youth player obviously no appearances in that before then getting picked up by chelsea in 2022 now he's been with chelsea all the way until the expiration of his contract at the end of this last season during that time he spent two seasons on loan one at crew 15 appearances a couple goals one at portsmouth 13 appearances so that's it 28 career appearance senior appearances while on loan as a chelsea player but did not make it with chelsea and found himself without a contract and nobody picking him up for whatever reason he was not picked up at the beginning of the year that left the london born english slash jamaican player who I think actually has the potential if he starts getting those regular senior appearances uh, in the Jamaican pool to you know get himself into that senior squad and start getting some appearances especially as a league one or eventually a championship side if he turns out to be a pretty good player for us anyway now in terms of quality right now he is seen to be just above Indoweni now where Indoweni fits into our squad Outside of a lone player, Adam Martin, Indoweni is seen as our top guy. So Hutchinson comes in as that right there with our top, top couple of players and maybe just an ounce better than what they are other than our loney that we've brought in. So that's a good sign. Also, he's versatile. He can play any of our three attacking positions outside of the striker. And we've had a bit of a hole at certainly one of those, that central attacking mid, not creating as many goals as we could or should on this season. So him fitting in above Joseph Bull definitely gives us an upgrade with Indoeni uh, more often than not starting to take up that right-hand side. If there's no drop-off between them, then that's an obvious pick. That does still leave you slightly shorthanded on the left-hand side with Mathurin still as the guy, as just a three-star guy there on the left. But here's the trade-off. Play Hutchinson on the left, Mathurin plays on the bench, and then you get your lone e bull some starts. So swapping him kind of left to center for the most part with Indoeni, mostly on the right with his Lapalo by backup for the most part. So we'll see what this guy can do but let's go ahead and give him a quick uh, comparison with bull and mathurin the guys he is looking to uh, take a lot of time away from when it comes to hutchinson you know that direct comparison the assistant manager might love him and have brought him in a bit high but i think he's maybe a little overvalued upon signing he's got some speed and that's good for the wing not necessarily for that central attacking mid spot where he's going up against jo joseph bolt now attacking wise very similar there's a point kind of trade off here aerially joseph bull is much better so hutchinson has a real weakness there he's not a great defender either uh, 
his only bonus over bull is speed, where the trade-off is the drop in aerial. Pretty similar players, if you ask me. Uh, bull has not done great, but he does have five goals and a couple of assists, and it does give us some depth where we didn't have it. So at least there is that. And as he had been released and not picked up, it meant his standards got lower, and eventually he was willing to sign with us as he grew more and more desperate to find a team. So getting him on a free makes him good value, even if he isn't going to be an instant starter, instant impact, but could absolutely rotate in uh, with those top two guys and, and get those minutes. But let's see, how does he compare with Mithurn? Similar profile these two are. A bit better vision for Hutchinson, a little more speed for Hutchinson, a little bit weaker defensively and aerially. Bit of a trade-off. So a little more attacking threat with, with Hutchinson, a little more defensive presence with Mathurin. And all three of those players are at a similar age profile, uh, with the exception being that Bull is... Aloney and outside of giving the required time, you'd kind of rather give it to Hutchinson and see him develop as we get to retain him on the long term. Mathurin has three goals, four assists, 10 yellows. He's had a lot of issues with that. <laughs> a lot of issues. And right about a 6.8 for his average rating. Uh, I think Hutchinson's more of a three star kind of guy. You look at him compared to those two, and he is right there with them. So maybe not best player, but certainly still fits into the upper echelons of our squad and will make a good addition, especially considering he didn't cost us anything and seemingly has a two, two and a half million dollar valuation. Not that we need two million dollars in the bank. We have plenty, but that's still a certainly not a bad thing to have for his first game I've left Hutchinson on the bench Lapalo by very much in need of a rest was promised that so he's out of the squad today but there are other players uh, Dale Taylor is in need of a rest Terry is quite tired in fact I should probably just go ahead and make the change now and bring in Muir for the start and let Terry rest and we'll see how that part goes but one good thing is finally we are starting to see with you know the minor changes we had to the squad especially with those low knees kind of falling in and the change in our, our midfield a lot of the partnerships that had been established uh, last season the changes were just enough and spread out in the across the pitch in such a way that virtually all of the good relationships that we had uh, built up last season were gone uh, we are finally getting back there where the regulars are starting to uh, get comfortable with one another again. <clears throat> An early penalty put us in a spot on this one, uh, but we do battle back. It looks like we absolutely should have been the winner on this. 65% possession, 17-4 to 4 on the shots. It only managed one shot on target all match long but a penalty is going to get the job done. Was it Marcus Muir who gave that up? Uh, well, in terms of ratings, I would guess that it might have been one of the fullbacks or somebody else helping, like, say, Adam Martin, who had a, a bit of a rough day. Dale Taylor, in need of a rest, apparently had a t terrible day. Uh, Hutchinson does get his debut and played decently well in said debut. Big problem on my hands. We just lost our best player and a position that was already in desperate mode besides him. Uh, Adam Martin has played the correct position the entire time, but the role that he's supposed to have wasn't. And they, Bristol City pointed it out to me about two weeks ago. And so I changed his assignment to fit that role and then he's been playing the correct role for the last couple of weeks. But Bristol City, already angry over it, uh, has decided to pull him back. 
he was agreed to play as a defensive mid. I mean, that part he has done, and he's played almost every single match of the entire season. I think we've sat him out maybe once. I mean, he made 26 appearances. It's only in the middle of January. That's a lot of games for our level. You know, we're, we're not a Champions League club. This, this is putting us in a spot of bother. Uh, the addition of Hutchinson was a good addition, but it didn't make us better. It just gave us more depth of starters, right? Where we had two guys and a drop-off behind those two guys. We now have a third guy of a similar caliber. So, okay, fine. You know, three guys ro rotate two positions. You got a little more cover if there's an injury, etc., etc. But losing out of Martin leaves us with a giant hole to fill because already the one position that I'm still desperate to find a replacement and, and find an upgrade for was defensive mid. And then we just lost the guy that they would be playing beside. So now we're going to have two weakened players at the position, and that is uh, very bothersome. And there was absolutely no chance. I mean, they just straight yanked him. There was no discussion this time, which, like I said, I just had a discussion with them two weeks. It was the first time that they ever even brought it up. I instantly fixed his role, and he's been playing in the correct role since. It sucks, but decisions already made, and he's gone. My short-term solution is this, and I, I don't think it's a bad solution. I was just having that discussion about the addition of Hutchinson helping us out. Well, it's helping out more than I thought it would, because it turns out that Joseph Bowl, the attacking mid who Hutchinson was about level with, Hutchinson's best position is out on the wing, not in that attacking mid, and that could be problematic for us. However, Joseph Bowl is a defensive mid as well as he, he plays those three positions through the middle. So Joseph Bull's going to drop to be a deep-lying playmaker. We're going to scoot Jenks over. It's not as good. We are worse in the position, even though a starter is slotting back and Hutchinson's coming in. Hutchinson isn't as good in the mid. Bull isn't as good as, uh, as what we were getting with Adam Martin on, on the creative side. And then actually also, on top of that, Jenks isn't as good slotting over the other way so uh, you lose you know three percent here you lose two percent quality there you lose one percent quality here it adds up every single position or of the three takes a little bit of a downswing and actually i think it's a lot more than two percent in one of those areas because it's you know it's adam martin we're talking about so uh, our best player so i i'd say there's a pretty significant drop off and this is worrying because, like I said, we're not that far above the relegation zone. And Adam Martin has been a big key for us. He's, I think he's had the best rating of anyone on, this, on the squad so far this season. But at least it's not a glaring hole. It's just a big one. <laughs> and the very same day I get disappointing news. I, previous episode, I told you I had two deals in the works. Hutch and Sid was the first of those. The second... It was just a loan deal, but Connor Ferguson from Manchester United was set to come to us on loan to play left fullback, a position that we're okay at, but Ferguson would have been a solid upgrade and, and definitely, you know, improve the depth side. And you get better any way you can get better. And in terms of loan players, we only had three, so he would have made four. You can have five within the squad. Well, with the absence of Adam Martin, we're down to two. And Connor Ferguson has decided that he is going to go to Eastley instead of us. So we're at two. So loans very much are on the table for uh, the remainder of January, especially if we can't secure permanent deals, which has been problematic for us just due to the reputation piece we can absolutely afford guys but so many guys just don't want it and the free agency thing gets harder and harder the higher you climb so 
are we going to be stalling out in a division for a while based on how things are going well, well let's wait till the end of january and see if we can make additional deals but if we end up losing our best player loney yes but losing our best player and replacing with a like for like average starter that's that would be a worrying side so the first half of january certainly has not gone very well well, I'm worried about this one. It's not a tough opponent in terms of league standing, but we are on the road and we have some tired players once again. So Dale Taylor getting the rest today. So that's Shaq Ford on stop. Taylor's got 13 goals. Shaq Ford has six. Uh, similar ratings though. So, I mean, there, there's not a big difference between the two. Um, but Lapala Bai in for Indoweni as Indoweni has picked up a one match suspension for yellow card accumulation. Hutchinson getting the start, Bull getting the start, and in Diddy in for Perry Na, who has picked up another minor injury, just some blisters. He'll be out for just under a week. Uh, and Na's only a 6.82 rating anyway. He's not doing great, but in Diddy is only a 6.7 himself. So uh, the weak point of our defense has been there. And a lot of heavy match load for these guys. This actually the final game of a lengthy set going well back into the early mid part of December with two matches weekly continually. We're finally going to have a couple weeks anyway of just Saturday matches starting with this one on a Saturday right now, next Saturday, Saturday after, before we finally have at least just one midweek match and then we'll go back to a, a, a few Saturdays. So the schedule will lighten, but for now, injury risk is quite high. Shaq Ford with a missed penalty, a very balanced game that saw fewer than 10 shots per side. We only managed to get one on target and looked like we never really threatened. So the game fizzles out in the attack, but at least for those two matches, we do still grab two points. A point apiece is certainly essential to survival. I mean, when you look at the table here, uh, the relegation zone is right at that one point per match so as long as we are exceeding that or at least matching that we're doing okay we occasionally are exceeding a lot of the times we're matching so just make sure we don't do worse than one point per match so yeah that's a rough trade-off with two teams near the bottom of the league to only come away with two points but at least we didn't lose either this one hurts more than the other two. Crawley is a better team. They're in the promotion playoff zone, but they win 1-0 with a late goal after we completely dominate them, except for one key attribute or one key stat, that is. Uh, shots were 12-5 in our favor. Possession, we got three-fifths of it. But shots on target, 3-1 to one in their favor. We could not put the ball inside the frame of the goal. And that was the difference in this one. That along with 10 billion yellow cards or six. Is that five? No, it's only five. Even that, that's quite a bit. We only, <laughs> we only committed 11 fouls for the entire game, but we get five yellow cards. They commit 11 fouls for the entire game and get one in the second minute, which means that was a pretty bad foul. That... That's harsh, and that, again, goes to show how much reputation matters in this game. I mean, we have so much going for us that would make this simple, would make this easy, and yet does the exact opposite and makes it quite challenging. Uh, but, of course, so far, we've overcome that challenge pretty well, and the finances portion has really, really boosted this club and brought us along. But much to the uh, disgust of everyone around us as we have no reputation. They, they just hate us. For right about a quarter million, the glaring hole, the biggest hole of all, at least has some dirt thrown in it. It's not exactly a top-notch guy. He's more a squad depth, rotational fringe player, but Cameron Humphreys... Uh, Humphreys, that is, has been picked up. We're looking at about a three-star talent, meaning, you know, capable. And he is 
the important thing is going to be compared to our weakest starter in the entire squad, which is Jenks. So let's see how he does uh, when you go up against Jenks. You can see he's a pretty well-rounded player technically. Uh, not good at long throws. Finishing's not great. Corners are not his thing. Penalty taking, not his thing. But otherwise, you know, 10 plus in every technical attribute. Mentally, oh, it's a little bit of a mix. I mean, it averages out to about a 10, but he's got some areas that, you know, he still needs uh, work on. He's not terribly determined, but his natural fitness is high. He avoids getting hurt. And while a little bit on the slow side, even then, he's. He is very much an average player and can play many positions. But of course, for us, it is that defensive mid where he'll slot in with Bull. You've got James Moore. You've got Elliot Jenks. So let's see how he fits in with those guys who are getting uh, the playing time at the position that uh, we expect to be using him at. You can see he has a very different profile than James Moore as James Moore is a ball winning midfielder. Humphreys is going to be more your attack minded guy uh, where each of them excel over the other in different areas. James Moore obviously is a bit more uh, well-rounded at this stage, but James Moore is also uh, pretty highly valued and has been out for a while. So it'll be nice to get him back in though only a 6.72 rating on the season so far so he really has not done as much as you would hope here's where he's going to offer us some assistance because Elliot Jenks has been starting as our ball winning midfielder uh, of late and you can see that Humphreys is a very similar mold uh, so again this is you know filling a hole Jenks has done better than more even though really not being the same type of player but with 14 starts five appearances off the bench four assists to his name he's got about a 6.9 uh, rating and has been playing a bit lately uh, you can see that Humphrey's a little bit better in the air and otherwise we're, we're talking about quite similar players uh, where each is a little bit better than the other in various areas and you'd say it's a pretty even wash between the two as of right now and of course, Joseph Bull has dropped to that defensive midfield from his attacking position where he was doing okay on the season, but with Adam Moore gone, we need that deep lying playmaker. And that is still Joseph Bull. But Humphreys can back that up. You know, he's he's not a huge drop off where our previous backups certainly were. So we've added some depth to, to the position with four guys that can rotate through the two spots now. Uh, a bit more freely than the next tier of players uh, that were backing it up that definitely aren't good enough for this level. Humphreys, not great for the level, but it's something uh, for a quarter million for our, our club. I'd hope to get more out of a quarter million, but we are kind of getting backed into a corner when it comes to this defensive mid and what the heck we're supposed to do to find somebody it has been the hardest position to fill over the last year and outside of some loans this is our first like well he and jenks are our only uh, permanent home kind of guys that are around with the club that are good enough uh, to be here there's guys that are just outside on the fringes but really you know they they can't step up and, and do the job none of them are doing great at it but at least he's another tolerable fit for us. Finally, a deal that makes us better as we're a few days away from the transfer deadline. It is a loan deal, though, uh, out of the Bundesliga, I believe it was. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Hoffenheim. Uh, Scheiber, the German player, is set to come into that attacking mid position that Joseph Bull has vacated. So we're back to having... The new guy, Hutchinson, be a rotational player uh, with Mathurin. And yeah, this is good. He's got a 16 passing. He's got really good physical attributes. His minimum's 11. Uh, he's got a couple 16s. He's good mentally outside of his defensive positioning and bravery, uh, which tackling is also a problem. But from that attacking midfield position, as long as he's still bothering to chase, and press the ball a bit he's still going to be useful for us but he's three and a half star 
three and a half stars in many various roles, meaning he can he can do a whole lot of stuff, and that's because he's got some attributes that nobody else has. He's he's pushing uh, the bar a little bit, and that dribbling, that first touch, that passing means he can be a very creative player for us and is actually good for our level uh, something that our team really is not we got guys that are serviceable that can just about hang in there that are you know low level replacement players and shouldn't be starting this is a guy that can get some playing time with a lot more teams in the league than uh, just our own he's only here on loan uh, but he's a great addition to our squad for the for this year and I, I think he's not far off from where Adam Martin was so you're kind of getting yourself back to where we were a couple weeks ago when we lost Adam Martin uh, in terms of we had a good one and lost him now we've got a good one to replace him on loan for the remainder of the season and therefore you know from here we're trying to once again build and actually get better not worse like we had done the first part of of january i'm i'm happy i mean i'm quite happy with this one final match before the transfer deadline we are on the road for this one and it's definitely going to be a big test as we have a varied squad compared to what we have but this is approaching kind of our best first 11 at the moment into any no on the right hand side baggett terry shipley you know cross back but Humphreys coming in this time like I said he's about a wash with Jake's or or more uh, more was out injured for a while he's finally back healthy but he's had a rough start to his season with a, a fairly low rating same with Apollo by and that's part of the reason why they've both been kind of relegated to the bench waiting to see some better performances Josh Powell of course has been terrible uh, at left back and so we, we haven't seen much of him for a while either but then there's the squad so Loney Scheiber is in into that attacking mid is an upgrade will be creative makes us a little more attacking than where we were before because Bull was the one in that attacking position with Martin anchoring that D or B in that deep playmaker now we have a stronger playmaker further up the pitch in Scheiber with Bull having dropped back as that deep lying playmaker and we know he's creative he's just not going to help us recover the ball quite as much but will Humphreys will Humphreys play that role uh, effectively I think he should be at least a little better than Jenks was so hopefully and then Mathurin who hasn't been bad this season at all uh, Hutchinson being played out of position things did not go terribly well being out of position for him as that attacking mid he's only got a 6.67 rating in his couple appearances so far <coughs> he definitely belongs more as a winger so we'll see how he performs out there on that wing okay well here we go wish us luck let's hope we can get a result because so far two points from three matches is a bad position to be in and we want to finish the month on a high we haven't won in a while we could really use one. Oh boy wow so cambridge united go down three nil we scored two goals dale taylor finally he has not scored in a while uh, he was definitely on a cold streak and then scheiber seals the deal in the 90th minute but as dominating as that was, 24-6 on the shots, 10 on target this time, which is huge. And somehow still only 55% possession. But I suppose if you go ahead in the first 20 minutes, the other team's going to try to be more attacking. One big key, though. Giabi sent off in the seventh minute. So we played almost the entire match with an extra man. Uh, we didn't pick up any yellow cards until very, very late. But two in stoppage time certainly did not help us out. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a big win for us. Frank, Frankie Terry had a weak day, but otherwise the squad was good. Scheiber, 8.7 in his debut rating. Uh, Joseph Bull, 7.9 with an assist from that defensive mid spot. Dale Taylor gets an 8.7, so uh, player of the match. Looks like, uh, well, 
could have been either Scheiber or Dale Taylor. But, man, oh, man, that that was very welcome uh, of a result. Five points from four matches played puts us just ahead of the curve to uh, maybe hold position. And we are. We are 15th still on 41 from 31 played. We're scoring one and a quarter per, so that's right on track with that, isn't it? So uh, there's that. A couple days till the transfer deadline. Uh, let's get straight into it and see if, if we can actually get better. Because like I said, now we're neutral. Took a shot in the dark on this one and come up just short because I just offered to spend potentially $25 million on just a single player, uh, Manchester City, David Rusko. The 20-year-old defensive midfielder would come in as a four-and-a-half-star guy, be by far the best player on the squad. He is not in a happy scenario. I already previously knew that he wasn't interested, but I thought maybe deadline day, desperation. He's championship level already. Uh, so he would have been a massive, massive acquisition for our club for a massive fee. But wasn't to be. Uh, he has easily Premier League potential. So, I mean, this this is a guy that's would be the first piece. Uh, at, and at just 20, you know, he'd be the first piece locked in place for a long time coming if we were able to hang on to him and not lose him to bigger clubs for bigger fees which very well could have happened within a year or two but anyway uh, absolutely no interest from him even on deadline day so seven hours and shrinking as we are getting closer to that deadline and as of yet nothing materializing outside of the uh, the failed rusco transfer and as we enter the final 30 minutes, there's nothing happening. There's no deals out there, and we are well, stuck. That's, that's it, folks. Uh, time is about to expire, and transfer deadline has passed with no additional deals, which means this is a January in which we essentially are just at a wash. Humphreys gives us a little more depth at defensive mid, but having lost... Adam Martin, uh, that wasn't great for us. Scheiber is a huge addition, though. But again, he's of the same skill set of Adam Martin. The only difference is he's going to play a little bit higher up and drop bull down. So will we score more goals? Probably. But will we give up more goals? Probably. We're not going to be quite as good defensively. So is it a wash? Probably. But will it be? Maybe not. The first game out, anyway. If that's any indication, it's only one match. But a 3-0 win on the road against a good team with Bull and Scheiber doing the bulk of the offensive creation with Dale Taylor finishing things off, which outside of a, a recent run where he struggled a bit, maybe because he was tired and we did get him the rest he needed, Yeah, maybe that was... The, the ticket, the key that we needed. And this could be more impactful. Overall quality, though, it's essentially the same now as it was uh, a month ago. We do have a little more squad depth, at least, but I think the overall kind of first 11 quality is roughly the same. So I'm not expecting huge things, but maybe, just maybe, with a better attack, we'll score enough goals to offset only giving up slightly more and it could work out in our favor that's the hope anyway that's gonna do it for this episode though i'm the Kathleen gamer like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time have a good one be safe out there and bye for now